Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Lana Labonte and I am here to support, uplift, inspire, and empower you to be the best version of you you were meant to be. So we are continuing on with the invitation by Oriah Mountain Dreamer. This is the last chapter, chapter 12. Shall we? Finding our way home. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself. And if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. Tell me about a moment of real solitude. A moment when you were with yourself and felt yourself at the center. A moment when you could feel the world, the stars, and the galaxies spinning around you. In the spring of 1974, I took the train home at the end of my college term. There was one train a day that left Toronto in the early evening and arrived in my hometown. 400 miles north at 4.30 in the morning. No one knew I was coming, so there was no one there to meet me at the station. The only person to get off the train, I stood for a moment on the wooden platform and then swung my knapsack onto my back and started to walk toward home. My family lived on the opposite side of town about a mile and a half away. It was dark when I started walking, but by the time I'd reached the bridge that spanned the river in the center of town, walking past stores and restaurants, and the town's single traffic light, dutifully changing color, although there was not a car in sight, the sky was streaked with the pink gold of dawn, and the birds were singing the sun up. It's the quiet I remember the most, the sweet stillness of the whole town sleeping. I was 19, in blue jeans, denim jacket, and a yellow t-shirt with long, straight blonde hair. I inhaled a great gulp of the cool spring air and found myself smiling for no apparent reason. I suddenly realized that no one knew where I was, and yet I was there, close to so many who knew me. Walking down the center of the deserted streets, past the familiar houses, I felt invisible, seeing and yet not being seen by choice. For the first time in my life, I felt truly alone and completely with myself. I imagined the people I knew in those houses, sleeping, dreaming, waking to the growing light and rolling over to find one more hour of sleep, unaware that someone was walking past, observing their lives in motion. I paused for a long time and watched the river, endlessly muddy with the brown-red soil of the surrounding clay belt. The water flowed into the lake in an infinite stream, whether I or anyone else was there to see it or not. Just as the town and the life I had known growing up continued, whether I was miles away in the city or here, silently watching. Walking on, I passed a house as a light was turned on, and a woman, wrapped in her bathrobe, moved past the kitchen window to fill a kettle and put it on the stove as she did every morning at the same time. It was as if I stepped outside of something of which I had always, unconsciously, been a part and was seeing it for the first time. This stream of life, this cycle of ordinary living that goes on within and around us all the time. I knew that in a moment when I went through my parents' door, I would become a part of it again and lose this acute sense of being the witness alone and completely with myself and my own thoughts. I knew I would be swept up in the hugs and exclamations of surprise and greeting, the sharing of news and the sounds and smells of bacon and eggs and coffee, the irresistible tide of living in the world. But for this moment, I was with the world, watching it, but somehow not in it. I was alone with myself. I paused on the patio outside the back door, prolonging the moment. I was alone, lost to everyone, and yet not lost but there on the doorstep. I knew that home was as much in the slow walk alone through the quiet streets as it was in the arrival at this door. Home was in the taste of being with myself, walking to what was familiar toward what was cherished. When I opened the door, crossed the threshold with conscious deliberation and called out, is anyone in here up yet? 
As my mother came into the kitchen, I glanced back outside. In my mind's eye, I saw that other young woman standing there, backpack on, watching us and grinning at me. I knew I would get back to her. I had met myself walking home in the dawn, and I liked the company I'd kept in those empty moments. Tell me, have you met yourself? Have you been able to step outside the business of life for just one moment and look in from the outside, feeling yourself whole and separate yet with the world? There is a tension in living fully, what often feels like an opposition between our longing for the solitude where we can find our own company and the desire to be fully and intimately with the world. When we learn to live with both the desire for separation and the longing for union, we find that they are simply two ways of knowing the same ache. We all just want to go home. Some days, solitude is an impossibility. Caught up in the activities of daily living, I ache for my own company and am filled with a sorrow that makes me weep when I cannot find it. And at other times, I do too much and run too fast deliberately, unconsciously, hoping to avoid the cool and steady gaze of that young woman standing on the patio, the gaze that sees clearly what is within and around me. Sometimes I don't like what she sees, don't like the company I keep when I am with myself and want to pull away from this woman I am. So I fill the empty moments with TV or work or a book or time with another. It takes courage to be willing to meet myself over and over again seeing in my own face more beauty and grace and ability to love than I had hoped for, more judgment and impatience and need than I had feared. I forget that it does not matter how far or how fast I move, but only how much of myself I take along for the journey. Fortunately, the illness that found me early in my adult life makes it impossible for me to move too far away from myself for too long. What was endured as curse is now my blessing. If I do not find a way to regularly create a place in my life for time that is empty, when nothing is scheduled or expected or reached for, so I can be with myself, my glands swell, warning of an impeding descent into illness, calling me back to stillness. And sometimes when I find that sweet solitude, I hear warnings about isolation. Some summers, when I was alone in the wilderness, content in my tiny trailer at the edge of the lake, I would not speak to or see another human being for weeks. There, I could slow it all down. I felt the power of life being lived around and within me. I became like a sun-warmed rock in the center of the stream. The water parted around me, eddied in spirals and flowed on, gently wearing away all my sharp edges. Once a man who was my lover and friend and wanted to be more came to see me there unexpectedly. I had just split an armload of wood and was carrying it into the trailer as he appeared. He stayed only briefly. Later he told me, when I came down the driveway and saw you standing there with the wood in your arms, your face glowing from the wind off the lake, and the effort of chopping wood, I thought, she belongs to this place. She's at home here, alone in the bush. She's not missing me, doesn't need me here. I felt like an intruder. His observation surprised me. I heard the voice of my mother warning, you are too independent. Don't get too good at being alone or you'll end up by yourself. Everyone needs someone. Her fear finds a small corner in me. But I resist the idea that I will be with another only to avoid being alone. Surely the ability to truly be with myself does not exclude the willingness to fully be with another. I do not seek isolation. The longing for another remains even when I am able to be with myself, although it is smaller, a whisper that tugs at me gently. Even there, in my place of solitude, in the wilderness, 
I found myself at moments wanting to turn to someone and share my awe at the brilliance of the full moon on the still water, the delight of watching the otters play at the edge of the stream. But the loneliness was bittersweet and bearable because I knew myself and the world in a way I sometimes do not when I let my life become too full of doing things that do not really need to be done. Once in a while, trying to find the end of the thread of what wants to be written, I will do a writing exercise that involves finishing the statement, I don't want to write about. Over the years, the statement is most often completed this way. I don't want to write about the loneliness. For years, I thought the loneliness, the longing for the other was a weakness a sign that I had not learned how to be with myself. And there have indeed been times when I have wanted to be with someone simply to cover the ache of not being able to find my own company. But I have come to accept that no matter how much I am able to be with myself, no matter how much I like my own company, I still long to sit close to, and at times, to merge completely with another in deep intimacy. This too is coming home. The completeness of self is found when we can be alone and when we can bring all of who we are to another, receiving and being received fully. This is the sacred marriage, the coming together of two who have each met themselves on the road. When two who have this intimacy with themselves are fully with each other, Whether for a lifetime or for a moment, the world is held tenderly and fed by the image they create simply by being together. They can be friends or family, lovers or life partners, or simply two strangers whose lives intersect for a moment. They may be telling each other stories or making love or sharing a task or sitting in silence together. It doesn't matter. If having met myself in the empty moments, I am willing and able to bring all of who I am to another, receiving all of who they are, then we are truly together. In that moment, in the image our being together creates, we are the manifestation of life holding, creating, and feeding life. This is the fullness of the homecoming for which we all long. These moments, these sacred marriages of two, bring each person back to themselves more fully. When I was younger, the excitement of proximity and the heat of passion combined with an uneasiness with myself often meant that I lost myself when I was with another. When I was with someone who caught my imagination with possibilities beyond friendship, I found it hard to know what I wanted. I was aware only of his wanting me and was drawn by his desire. Now that I am more able to be with myself, I seek those I can be with completely without losing myself. And when I listen for and follow the quiet but deep impulse to move towards someone, moving only as quickly as I can while staying connected to this impulse, I find a sweet ease in my body and an infinite tenderness in my heart. And I recognize what I have longed for in the nameless ache that has been with me for so many years. The tension eases between my desire for personal freedom and independence. My desire for the solitude of my own company and my longing for deep commitment and intimacy with others. I find in our time together more of myself and I find in my time alone more of the world. Tell me. How do you live with yourself and those around you? Are you willing to meet yourself and not turn away from what you see? Can you touch skin to skin when we meet with just a word, a gesture, a moment of shared silence? Can you find your way home again and again to the place where all the longing is met? In the moments when we have come home to ourselves in the world, there is no fear because we know what we belong to and what belongs to us. When I was a teenager, I would walk home from choir practice in the evening, alone through the darkness, and I was not afraid. 
In the deep stillness of winter, with temperatures often colder than 20 below zero, I walk down silent streets between high banks of snow sparkling blue-white in the flickering glow of the northern lights. My breath hung in the air, small silver clouds of frozen moisture that came from my body. I was not afraid. I knew I belonged to the cold dark sky and the dancing lights. I knew I belonged to the people in the houses I passed, those I knew and those I did not. I knew I belonged to the snow-laden evergreens that bowed over the road. The only sounds were the crunch of my boots on the frozen ground and the soft, steady rhythm of my breath. And these belong to me. <sighs> Flowering Tree Meditation. We are able to be alone with ourselves when we are aware of our individual vitality and our place in the world. This meditation has often helped me to find a place of deep contemplation, singular wholeness, and connection with the world around me. Sit in a comfortable position with your back relaxed, but straight. If you are in a chair, make sure your feet are flat on the ground. Bring your attention to your breath, taking three large breaths in through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. Let your shoulders relax and drop down. On each exhalation, allow your weight to drop down into the bottom half of your body, letting go of any tension or tiredness. Close your eyes. In your mind's eye, see the sun, gold and shining brilliantly above you. Breathe the warmth and energy of the sun down through the top of your head into your heart. Exhale this golden light down through your body and out through the base of your spine. Imagine a root coming out from the base of your spine, going down into the ground with each exhalation, fueled by the power of the sun. See it in your mind's eye, going down into the moist brown earth beneath you effortlessly moving down past boulders and underground streams, deeper and deeper into the coolness of the ground. Breathe the sunlight into your heart and breathe out this root, seeing it extend a little more on each exhalation. Now, imagine beginning to feel a tingling, a warmth at the end of this root as it nears the magma, 
the core of molten metal and rock at the center of the earth. Breathe this heat and energy from the center of the earth up along the root with each inhalation. Feel the root get warm and vibrate, bringing the energy up farther and farther towards your body with each inhalation. Feel this heat, this energy, enter your body Breathing it up through the center of your body into your heart and exhaling it from your heart up through the top of your head. With each breath, breathe the power, the heat and the light of the magma into your heart and exhale it through the top of your head, feeling yourself firmly rooted to the earth. Feel your body like the trunk of a tree, bringing that energy up from the earth and sending it out through the top of your head as branches. With each exhalation, see the branches in your mind's eye spreading out from the top of your head, lush and flourishing, reaching for the sky, filling with leaves. As you continue the cycle of energy, imagine the branches growing, arching above you and coming down on either side of you to touch the ground. Sit and feel yourself at the center of the cycle of connection, breathing in the energy from the earth up into your heart and exhaling it out through the branches that return it to the earth where they touch the ground on either side of you. Be aware of your solid connection to the ground, of the strength of your body and the beauty and flexibility of the branches that grow out from the top of your head. From this place of wholeness and connection, open your mind and heart to the thoughts of the world, its joys and its sorrows, neither reaching for nor hanging on to the thoughts that come, but simply observing them without judgment. Notice what thoughts and feelings about the world come to you, those about your own personal circles of family and friends, and those about the world beyond your immediate circle. Feel yourself with the world even as you are here, alone and completely with yourself.
And that concludes the invitation, the last chapter. Let me know in the comments, how did that resonate with you? What came up during these readings? And will you answer the call to live fully? The invitation of life in all its sorrows and all its joys in the fire and the enduring sustenance. It has been my pleasure to read this. Let me know if there are any other books that call to you that you would like me to entertain or read to you. So much love from my heart to yours.